Hello guys, welcome back to my channel and uh, this episode is going to be episode 41 but this is mostly like a bonus uh, video that I, um, I was thinking of doing uh, throughout this series that uh, from previous episodes and pretty much what I want to do for this video is kind of go through at least cover everything that has to do with uh, rendering and um, uh, spe specifically the type of style that I did uh, all the previous episodes because um, I, I think I didn't cover a lot of the uh, specifics uh, that I went through uh, when I was doing those those backgrounds so I wanted to do like a bonus video uh, covering that uh, especially since uh, some some people asked for it and so uh, let's get started so pretty much here you're gonna see that I have all my uh, render passes and uh, this one that you see here is just a regular overall uh, render pass which has uh, all the information and I'm just gonna go through some of these but pretty much these are the usual render passes that I use and the ones that I use for for this particular uh, project uh, so first one we have the diffuse one and pretty much this one gives me the um, either the texture the flat texture or the color texture that I that I put on these different elements and so as you can see I didn't put I didn't actually texture uh, the uh, 3d model I just did like very basic um, colors and values on, on these elements um, and there's a few reasons for that one of them being I'm not really a good uh, texture for 3d uh, and then the second one, I wanted to keep it very simple because I wanted to do the texturing in Photoshop so I could have uh, a little bit more control over the texture. Since I wasn't, I wanted to try a style where it wasn't very heavy uh, texture wise. And so uh, I wanted to have control over that. So that's the diffuse. This is uh, regular uh, globe illumination, my normals. And as, as the video progress, uh, this is going to be a very casual, probably long video because I'm going to try to cover as much as I can. And so I'm going to, every time I use one of these render passes, I'm going to explain why I use them. Uh, so, but for now, I'm just going to mention this so you know what they are. And uh, this is the Roy GI uh, Raw Light, which pretty much gives me just the direct light information. It's pretty useful. And this is my reflection. Uh, the shadow, which is pretty much the opposite of the uh, raw light, uh, render ID, and C depth. Now, I rendered these using Maya V-Ray, and as you can see here, and on the diffuse one, if I zoom in a little bit, you're going to see that these objects have a outline to it. Now, the way I did this, uh, I was a regular tune shader in V-Ray Maya, and this is a very important part uh, for getting this sort of uh, style rendering um, and uh, this is just an easy way to get it uh, and it's applying the tune shader and you get this outline on on these elements now you're gonna see throughout the video that i am gonna paint uh, my own uh, outlines in some of these elements but this will give me a good base to have this sort of look uh, sort of to the animated look to it all right now I could have uh, multiple it's probably my dog drinking water but uh, I, can, I can start in a few different ways I can start with this uh, beauty render which has all the information and then I guess I apply some of these uh, some of these render passes uh, but uh, another version another way that you can do it is like you actually can use some of these and let's start with the diffuse. I'm going to duplicate that because I always like to make a copy of it just in case I mess up. And I'm going to grab my raw GI, put that on multiply so I can add sort of like the uh, um, ambient occlusion and the shadows onto my diffuse layer. And I'm going to grab my rollout layer. And I'm going to duplicate that so I want to reuse that again later this a little bit and I'm gonna put this on color touch and you're gonna see is the lights pretty blown out so yeah I'm gonna just adjust the layers just a little bit now this is sort of a longer process when you start doing it like this to try to get to something similar to the beauty render right which is why usually 
do not go this way but there's sometimes that um, sometimes I uh, I just do it because um, I have a little bit more control on on how these um, layers are applied all right now let's bump the saturation on this we change the color if you want And uh, let's grab the row shadow. And I think we want to do, let's do lighter color. And I'm actually going to edit this, going to colorize it and bring it down. So I could have these blue shadows. So a different blending mode. Now the cool thing about doing it this way is that let's say I put a mask here. I'm gonna start playing with how much I want this to be affecting the whole scene, right? So I could maybe just want some of that uh, orange light coming into on just these areas. So I could apply a mask on that and then have a little bit more control over that, right? And depending on the situation, you want more or less or however you want to do it, right? But as you can see, I'm, I'm doing all these passes uh, by themselves and it's a little bit, you know, to me it's a little bit time consuming. So what I try mostly, most of the time what I do is I'll just, just start with my beauty render. And from there I can add or subtract or you know whatever i need to do from here on right so the first thing that i usually try to do for this uh sort of thing is kind of get the overall mood of the lighting and i'm not too worried about uh, textures or details or anything like that right now um, so let's just go ahead and start applying some of these just to kind of bump up the mood that i want for this piece right, i'm gonna use my raw light we're gonna call it dodge and bring it down a little bit in darkness so it's not so blown out and let's put a mask on that and let's just reduce some of that in some of these areas here let's grab my raw shadow now this is sort of like almost instinctively right now because I've, I've done this so many times so um, you know, there are going to be parts in this video where I'm just going to be quiet working, um, also trying to figure stuff out. Uh, but now I want to add that really cool color onto my shadows. So I'm going to change the color of this. There we go. Might be too much. Just bring the saturation down a little bit. Let's do some curves to kind of unify the values a little bit. And of course, my, my light is coming from the top right here. So I'm going to keep that in mind. And uh, let's add... So this is my reflection. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. But let's try it out. Let's put on linear dodge and let's colorize that. Let's bring the brightness down. Sort of give me like a cool look. Uh, let's try a different color. So this is nice. Maybe I could try this. It's not bad. I really like the blues going on here and here in these shadows areas. So let me see how that looks without it. So I just want in some of the areas. Let's get it rid of here. And I just want a tad of that in here. All right. So some color adjustments. So, um, so yeah, so little by little, I'm, I'm 
applying layers and layers of different things just to kind of get the mood that I want. I feel like the light is blowing out some of these areas, so I want to be careful with that. So this is where my C depth, this is one of the ways that I use my C depth um, pass. So right now it's like this, I could either, let's duplicate that, invert it. Um, now let's try it this way. I'll put this on screen and let's colorize that. So now what I have, sort of like a bloom type of effect. Now let's put a mask on that, paint it black, and now with a gradient, I'm going to paint a white, sort of like this direction here, just so I can get some of that bloom going into my scene. As you can see on this side here, I'm getting some... I'm not too worried about it, but I just want to, I might actually just blur um, most of these left sections so I can get my focal point on this part right here. And uh, we can actually test that right now. So I'm going to control A to select everything, control shift C to copy pretty much everything that I see on my canvas, and then control V kind of places a new layer with everything there. And I'm going to duplicate that and do a quick... Let's do a last blur here real quick. Just want to see how that will look. And then I'll put a mask on it. And very quick, I can just do something like this. Just so I get more blur areas here on the right. And then as you get closer to the left here, it's going to be more sharp or sharper. Right? And I think that effect will be cool, actually. Yeah. So that's some, but that's something that I'm going to do at the very end when I'm done. Um, but I just wanted to see, just to kind of see how that would look, right? So I'm just going to delete that. And now one thing that I want to do actually is, uh, one thing that I noticed, like the wall here. Let me mark that. Let's do this. This wall here is sort of the same value as these things that I have on the wall. So that's something that I don't want. I want to have a good um, separation in value from there. Uh, similar to what I have here for this sort of like garage door with the wall. It's a little bit darker, slightly darker. So I want to have some sort of separation from there. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a selection here. And this is one of those things where it takes a little while, but in the long term is saves a lot of time, especially if you're gonna use it a lot. So what I'm doing is pretty much I'm gonna create a selection here that I'm gonna save and and then I will need to do this anymore um, if I need it again. So once I have my selection, um, I'm gonna press this little button here on my channels and I, that will create a mask with that selection, right? So I'm gonna do the same thing for this. Here, boom, boom, boom. I'm gonna try not to select this cable here, and I'm gonna deselect this other cable here. Okay, that looks good. And then I'm gonna go to my channel there. And I'm gonna paint on with white in there. So that's what I want. That's my selection. All right. So now, if I get rid of that selection there. Let's say I wanted to go back to that selection and do some edits just to that area. I can control click that channel and then it will bring my selection there. Now, if I want to select the opposite, I can just um, opposite selection and then I just do the same thing here and I can select without having to do the opposite selection feature. I can just click to that channel and I'll select everything else but the two elements here, right? So 
let's select those elements and I'm actually going to do some curves just to edit those values in there. And let's do that again. Select and I'm going to desaturate this a bit, make it a little bit darker. I got some greens here, but I, I'm not too worried about those. I can paint those later. And I'm actually going to do another selection here for these little sections here, because these are going to be a different material from the main body of these elements here. These things are going to be sort of like glass things, and uh, they're going to have some um, screen UI or something like that. Actually, I'm just gonna do this one too. Let's do like a little one here at the top. As you can see, I'm not married by the, I'm not fully married by the 3D model. Um, you can always change things as I go. And so like that, do a new layer. I just sort of do like a uh, simple over paint here. Very simple. Just gonna keep this sharp. And it's good. I kinda kinda want to keep some of that green in there. Just keeps it like a a worn out um, look so and let's actually do that again um, I see these red spots here so I'm just gonna diffuse that just a little bit I'm using just a very simple um, brush texture just kind of go over just a little bit over that All right, now I'm gonna select my new selection there for this things, for this uh, screen sort of elements and so I get saturation, just make that darker. There you go. All right, so um, another key point here to sort of get that look, um, we do some of this right here. It's a bit too much. So as I was saying, uh, one of the other things that I think is uh, sort of critical to get that sort of anime-ish look is uh, not to use ambient occlusion. So as you can see here, um, at this section here, let me do some points here. Let's get this. So you can see here the shadow or the cast shadow here from here to here has sort of a similar value to it, right? And if I go to my GI um, render pass, so let me find that out. This one is this one actually. So you can see here in the raw GI, you're going to see that the closer the the elements are the darker it's going to be so this high is very dark because that's a really tight spot same here and here and it gets lighter as it goes out right so that's global that's the um, no, ambient occlusion and you get that with the global illumination so you can see here and here and you know all these tight areas right here um but i think um I noticed that in some of these anime-ish backgrounds, or the style that I was going for for these backgrounds is um, not to have that so much, right? So I think it could be, um, you could have it but very, 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 very little. Um, so either, I'm probably just gonna keep it this way or maybe I'll just, let's duplicate that and do that on multiply and actually gonna bring the levels way closer to each other. So it is very 
subtle. As you can see, it's getting very grainy, which I don't like. But I'm going to turn down the opacity. And it's very subtle, very, 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 very subtle. Actually, I want it a little bit more subtle. In there. All right. Let's see how it looks. Perfect. Okay, so now um, let's do a quick round of rendering here. It's going to be very, very simple. Just to kind of uh, fix a few things and just kind of go over and uh, uh, try to uh, keep getting this closer to this sort of um, anime-ish look. And the way I'm going to do that is uh, with a regular new layer. I'm actually going to use a lot the line tool. So line tool here, and I'm going to test my thickness. And let's say I want to do it here. So that might be too thick. Let's bring that out to two pixels. Yeah, that works. That's perfect. So I'm going to go th with this over the whole image uh, on the areas that I think are going to uh, need it. And I'm actually just going to pick from the colors that I already have here. So let's say I want to do, I'm going to wear this garage door. I'm going to pick this lighter color. I'm actually just going to go through here like this. Right, you're gonna see it's pretty bold, right? But I'm gonna grab my soft brush. I'm just gonna dial it down just a tad. I'm not gonna have it in the shadow up here. And there we go, it's very subtle. Now we're just gonna continue doing this all the way through my image. Let me go full screen. Let's go through here and this could be a little bit tedious but at the end I think it will pay off so I actually adjusted the thickness of the line I made it uh, one pixel instead of two because for these uh, far away um, more shots uh, it doesn't need to be that thick in that way you're giving the impression of depth with the thickness of your of your lines. So let's do a few more here. I'm not gonna go all the way down because I just want to keep this uh, by the focal point. I'm gonna grab my actually let's go all the way down actually and. I will do all these all together. There we go. So even like this, it's kind of cool the way that highlight gives that cool effect here in this area. But I'm gonna dial it down in down here because it's a little bit darker down here, so I don't want it too bright. And so with my soft brush, I'm just gonna just gonna touch that up just a little bit. Just gonna keep it like that on the top here. I'm gonna get rid of it here on the shadow area like that and here like so and there you go I'm gonna keep doing this all the way across I can even do it here on the cables but I'm actually gonna use a different color here There. And let's move on to here. Actually, let's use, uh, let's try this. Like so. So 
So the second grab the dodge tool and just kind of go over a little bit just to bring it up a little bit. There we go. You can see I already have that from the rendering here, which looks pretty cool. I like that. Um, so I just want to go throughout all my image and have that consistency with with that um, sort of effect. Now you're going to notice here that I'm doing it mostly on the faces that are facing the light, right? So for these cables, I'm not going to do it on the right side here because it, it wouldn't make sense. So I want to be careful where I place this so it's, it's consistent with my light source. Actually, gonna replace that black line there, like so. Okay, now what I can do is sort of the same thing, but let's do it for the shadows. I can play around with uh, some of the nice blues over here. So let's say I can pick this gray, uh, cold gray here, and let's make it a little bit more cool and lighter. And now I'll make a new layer so I can keep those separate. And I can start ahead and make it some nice uh, cool reflections here. It's pretty much the same process, but now on the shadow side. So like this. <clears throat> And so, little by little, now this might seem that it doesn't do much, but little by little, this adds up to the feel and look of, of this sort of anime-ish um, effect. <clears throat> I want to do the same thing for every single cable here. I want to make sure I'm consistent with that. Now sometimes I get this curve and sometimes I have to do that manually uh, instead of using the line tool. So that's a little bit more tricky. And so I want to be a little bit more careful with how I place that. And let's merge those two together and let's see how that looks before and after. Actually, I could do a little bit more on this side. Oops. The layer. <clears throat> and let's uh, add more on this side here. Let's take a look to see where can we add a little bit more of that. So it was a little bit time consuming, but again, I think it's worth it. All right. <clears throat> 
So let me merge these two. And again, we might do this again later, but uh, just to start doing some of these um, already, just to kind of set up the, the look for this. Now, sometimes I get these artifacts here, and um, I can go ahead and kind of paint those manually. I almost want to think that the shadows and light are almost like cell shaded, sort of like anime ish. Um, and then I try to do that bridge between realistic and cell shaded after the fact and um, just to just so it doesn't look too flat but you can see like most of my uh, cast shadows here are hard edge and they're pretty sort of flat um, which is fine but I um, also want to take it and push it a little bit more into the realistic just a little bit um, so that way it doesn't look too flat or too cartoony. <clears throat> All right, so we have that now. So now, um, as you can see, like all the all these elements, the wall, the uh, this elements here, and. Uh, the grass and all, it looks sort of flat, you know, there's really no texture on it. And to be honest, um, you know, for, for this sort of feel, I always try to avoid doing um, any sort of photo texturing or photo bashing because that will keep adding to the more realistic side. And that's something that I'm, you know, I'm trying to avoid and I'm trying to keep it a little bit more anime style or uh, a little bit more stylized. But um, I think we can add some of the textures using the same techniques as uh, photo texturing. However, we're going to keep it very light. And it's just, just to give it a little bit more teeth and, and texture to this wall and these different um, elements that I have. It's not going to be for all of them, but uh, it's going to be for some of them that are more prominent in the scene. So for example, if we look at the wall here, let me try to bring some textures here. <clears throat> Let's say I have this texture and this texture. And maybe, let's see, I'm looking at my other monitor here. So I'm going to bring these textures in here. <clears throat> And for this one, all right. So, so these two textures. And first, uh, I'm gonna try and see. Maybe not this one. This one. I'm gonna try and see how this look. Oh, it's really low res. It's fine. <clears throat> I'm gonna try to see how these look with some of the blending elements here, blending. So this overlay, I really like what's happening over here. And I like the discoloration that this gives to the, to this uh, door here. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, let's take a look at this one. Let's make it a little bit smaller. And let's put that in overlay, which usually works most of the time. And we'll look at this. This is nice. This is what I'm looking at. Very subtle, very subtle texture. And I like this. It looks like it's being worn out on the edges and that sort of thing. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, like here, these spots over here. Now, I don't want to use it like this, how it is right now, because it might look too on the realistic side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this one up first. I'm gonna duplicate it. So I'm gonna edit it. I wanna make sure I have a copy that is clean and original. And I really like all this on the door here. So what I wanna do is pretty much, um, let's say I wanna do a little graph here so you understand the, the basic of it. 
and let's say uh, let's add a red color so looking at this image that I just imported and I put it in overlay you know there's a value range between between the lightest actually let's just do it like this between the lightest or darkest point into the lightest right and this is big range of value uh, which means information in that image and so since this is a actual photo of that um, effect it's gonna look it's gonna have a lot of information and it's gonna which is why it looks very realistic because he has so much information in the photograph so what I want to do is to reduce that is to I want to bring these two a and b closer together right so my range is going to be way smaller right and it's going to be a little bit flatter so it's going to have less information but it's still going to give me something that is going to give me um, some some texture to it right so the closer that this is the less information i have the flatter is going to be the 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 larger the gap between those two um, extreme values the more information I want to have, right? So right now is very large. You know, it's, it's a photograph, so it's gonna have all this information. The way I do that is if I go to my levels and I bring my light, my lighter uh, values darker and my darker values lighter, right? So depending on how I want, it, if I want it mostly darker or mostly lighter, I'll play around with the position of these two. But as you can see here already. Is very very subtle the texture that I have in there right and so that's what I'm looking for I don't want to go too extreme because then it's gonna look too realistic but I think I want to do something like this where it's very 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 subtle like that and even if you look at the at the wall here it's gonna have just a little bit and it's, it sort of gives you like a wash actually to the whole image with that texture which is pretty cool and so like if I remove that, as you can see, it's very subtle, but it is just enough where, um, where it gives me something a little bit more uh, interesting. So I'm going to reduce some of that in some of these areas where I think is too much. Because so I might bring another texture to it. And so I don't want to have too many in there. Right. <clears throat> now we're gonna do the same thing to the other one. So not this one. This one I like this one a lot actually. So let's duplicate that. So we have a copy, and we're gonna do the uh, same thing. So you see, if I just do the the darks, it's gonna go it's gonna go very very bright. So I wanna close these two together. Yeah, that's nice see I like this area here it looks really nice this area here and this area here so I'm just gonna create a mask and uh, I'm gonna paint that mask black and I just want to have it just in there and here as well and here as well now again I remember I'm gonna blur some of this area here so I don't have to worry about putting too much here because it's gonna get blurred anyway. So mostly concentrate on this side here. Yes, uh, right there. Just a little bit on that wall. <clears throat> and there you go. This might be a little bit too much. So just kind of reduce that a little bit. And there you have it. <clears throat> All right, so I still want to add something to this wall to make it a little bit more interesting. And uh, let's see, I'm going to create a new layer. This might work, this might not work. But I want to add some, some uh, tiling, some sort of tiling to this wall. So I'm going to pick a, a shadow color. And uh, I'm actually going to use the garage door here to do my grid lines here. So that's one there. Maybe there's one going down like this. Yeah. 
And let's do another one on this side here, like that, maybe. Yeah, that could work. We're gonna do right one in the middle here, like this. And maybe there is a, another one going down, like so. That could work. All right, so now I will delete the areas that I don't want, which is everything from here to the left. And I'm going to grab my eraser and just erase the areas that go over here. So like this, and I can go here, here, here. Like so. Like so. Now we have some sort of tiling in that um, on that wall. Now I could uh, put a mask on it and sort of wash a little bit so it's not that prominent. Like so. I'm using a uh, texture brush just so it's not too even. There we go. And I'm going to create a new layer on top and then I'm going to add a highlight on that light side. That might be too much. Actually, it's out of place. Like so, yeah. And this side. <clears throat> and this side. All right. I'm gonna grab my soft brush. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did earlier. Make sure here. I just want a hint of that. Just, just enough to give it some depth to that tile. Let's go over these cables. And there we go. Make sure that everything looks good. All right. So, <clears throat> so we added some texture, some separation here, and uh, let's make sure we got this right. All right. So now. I could go ahead and actually um, add a little bit more detail by actually painting. Um, the way I do that is, now again, I'm going to concentrate on this side. I'm going to zoom in real good here. I want to make sure that it's pretty good on this side. And I can color pick the information that I already have and just kind of go over some of these um, edges here and got some imperfections and that sort of thing. I don't want to go too crazy because again the more information I have uh, it must start looking too realistic. So I just want to be careful with that. I could add a little bit uh, smaller details to this. Like so. A bit too big. So again, little by little, you start uh, adding more character to all these um, elements that in the scene. I'm just gonna go around and start picking. I actually like that green a lot here now. I can use that to add some imperfections to it. I 
which I think is like one of the, not tricks, but one of the um, things you could do to make to make a background look um, livable and that has some character to it by adding these little imperfections and making it look like it's actually being used. We can add some sort of like indication of a little panel, a little indication of some holes or breathing room in there. sure that it goes with the perspective. Now, there is a render pass here, which I haven't used yet, which is called the normals. And the normals I really, really love because it gives me a color depending on the direction of the face, right? And I know they use this in 3D a lot and I don't, I don't know um, much about it, but the way I use it is just, for example, in this case, I have this really warm light coming from the top uh, left here. So it's gonna be hitting the ground on screen here. And that ground is gonna reflect that warm light up, right? So all the faces that are facing down are gonna receive some of the light. So a quick way to do that is I can grab my normals um, render pass. And let's say, you know, this is, this is the bottom face. This is the bottom face of this part here. So that has a color, a specific color. And I can grab that color and I can go select similar. And it's gonna grab all the um, same colors in this layer. So it's pretty much going to give me all the faces that are facing down. So I'm going to save that selection. And let's make a new layer. And now let's say I want to add some warmth into this face here. I'm going to grab that color. A little bit lighter, warmer. And let's hide that selection. I'm just going to tap that part just like so. The same thing here, here, like so, right? And I can do the same thing with all the faces that are facing whatever direction that I want. So let's say the, fa the faces that are fa the faces that are facing right towards my shadow. I'm gonna select that one, similar, and I'm actually gonna select this one, and this one, and this one. And this one, and this one. All right, this one on top. And I save that selection. And I go back to my layer. Now I can add a warm light. I already have the selection active. So let's say I could do a adjustment layer. Let's say a photo filter. And let's do a cooling one. Maybe something like so. And let's put that into screen. Let's do screen. So now I just gotta play with the mask and kinda just have that in the areas that I want. But I'm getting this nice cool color here which is nice and over here on this side as well. And 
I'm gonna do the same thing with the top. For some reason it's not really connecting most of this color, so I'm gonna do it manually, which is fine. And it's mostly this top of this box here. So let's save that. And uh, let's do actually a new layer. Let's put that on color dodge, grab some of that orange. And let's bring some of that in there. Like so. Right. Let's take a look around. It has some weird um, <clears throat> instances here and reflections, so I'm just gonna paint that off, which is fine. Just gonna go around and take a look at this. All right. So let's flip that. Okay, so we're almost there. Now, um, let me play with the levels here just a little bit. Want to make sure that this um, my color right here. So let's say, for example, I do this color filter, right? It's applying it to my whole image. But let's say I wanted to apply it just to my shadows area, right? Because now it's like all over the place. Now this, by default, gives me a mask. And I could, you know, paint this black and sort of like go to my shadows and kind of paint with white where my shadows are. But that seems like too tedious, especially if I have hard edges and I don't want to go over some of these objects and whatnot. So what I can do is I can grab my my uh, raw shadow here. I'm gonna actually duplicate that, and uh, let's reduce all the saturation. So I have that, and let's make that as white as possible, like so. All right. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select that and by control click in the layer i'm going to create a new, a new channel and i'm going to copy on that layer and paste it on my new channel so i have that so now when i control click that channel it's only going to select the white which is my shadows from my raw shadow pass all right and now i can go back to my photo filter paint that selection white and that's only on the shadows affected, right? If I can do, if I want to do the same thing to my lights, then I'll just flip the flip the uh, selection, and um, it's gonna be affecting just the lights, I guess. So let's reduce that. And I actually want to make this a little bit warmer. So, all right, let's take a look around and I want to try the blur thing again. So I'm going to do control copy everything. Let's do a lens blur, put a mask on it and let's take a look at this. reduce some of this warm so I can still see the cool shadows and I think I could come back to here and increase my glow here all right Just 
play with my channels here real quick. Okay, so now let's move to a different phase here. And I have collapsed everything here into just one layer. Um, so I'm just gonna delete this so it runs a little bit faster. And uh, let's start adding some decals and stuff. So I already created this um, file here with like a bunch of signs and decals and stuff that I was using on this project. And so I'm just going to pick and choose now, um, I don't know, Japanese or anything like that. So I'm just going to pick whatever I think is going to fit better. And I know it's most likely not going to make any sense, but uh, we just want to make it cool at least for, uh, for this purpose. So let's see. So I have some of these here and I can grab maybe this one. And let's also get this yellow one here. Scrub that. And let's do, I should like this little details on this one. Uh, let's see where that one is. There we go. And okay. All right, so I got these three. Now, um, this is what I'm gonna be adding here into this little piece here. So I gotta make it sort of vertical. Okay, so let's grab this one and I'm gonna get rid of this line here. And this over here. I should have got to make it vertical, like so, maybe too big. And uh, let's flip this a little bit this way. And it's OK, let's do this. Right, and this is gonna be for this side here. Now let's try this one on this side. Let's get rid of this border. And let's make it, I'll keep it this way. Gonna get rid of this part. So, and this will be for that. Now I want to add another one, but let's see what we have here. Maybe we can use the, um, do like this one here. So let's uh, grab that one. I want to grab the whole group. Let's put it in here. And maybe, maybe this big one here. Like so. All right. And for this one, I want to add it into this wall here. So let's uh, actually make this a little bit bigger. Let's cut this. Like so. 
so. Trying to get into perspective here. Like that. There we go. Now let's try some blending modes here to see what we get. Let's reduce some of the opacity there. Some lightness green, yeah, I like that. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna offset it just a little bit just to give it sort of like a uh, kind of like a light sort of effect. I'm gonna blur that with some motion blur a little bit. slightly I'm gonna lower the opacity on the bottom one like so yeah like that I'm gonna do the same thing with this one's here so let's go ahead and do it with this one Right, different, different um, blending modes here. Actually, let's colorize that a little bit. The color could be good. Let's see. Could do some greenish ones here. I want to add this. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Put that in perspective. I'm gonna do this probably a few things, a few times with different ones since I am making it a little bit smaller, which is fine. Because that way I have this small details going. And I am gonna do the same thing so I'm uh, Duplicate a few times, do some motion blur into one. This might be too much. Offset that a little bit. The one on top, I'm gonna move it on top of that. And the one on the bottom, I reduce the opacity. I'm gonna also reduce the opacity on that blur one. So ultimately, I want the one on the top to stand out the most. That one. Like so. Yeah. And let me see, let me grab this one. Oh, uh, this makes no sense whatsoever, so I apologize, but just want to give you guys the idea here. <clears throat> I do like that blue, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep that one. And I'm gonna make the rest this green. I do like that blue a lot. So let's keep that there. And again, let's duplicate it two times. The one in the middle will motion blur it. Offset that with the one on top, like so. And we'll reduce the opacity on the bottom ones. So, now I'm going to go back to my background and I'm actually going to add some of that green light into here. There we 
we go. <clears throat> and let's go to the other one here. Actually, these three, I'm going to move them just a little bit to the left there. There we go. And I guess I'm alias here, which is weird. Just gonna paint that up in there. Some little details here. Right. Now let's do this one. And uh, this one over here. Actually, all these I'm gonna put them into this group. And I actually want this blue on this one. Really like that blue. Let's put that in perspective. All right, let's duplicate that two times. The one in the middle, wash and blur it. I'll set that with the one on top. I'm gonna put the one on top on color dodge. Yep and lower the opacity on the bottom one. Like so. I actually forgot to put these, the ones on top, on color dutch. Let's take a look here. This one, let's put it on color dutch. Yeah, so that way it doesn't look too fly, it has some lights um, some highs and lows in the intensity of it, which I like. And I'm gonna do the same thing to this one. Call it digit. There we go. Now this one's not that clear, so one way you can do it is to let's see, duplicate the one on top. Maybe put the bottom one on screen. There we go. That way it's a little bit more clear. It might be too much, but you can lower the opacity. And let's put this on screen. There we go. All right. So now one thing we can do is put this all in the same group it's on a regular layer I can go and add very 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 tiny little ones uh, I'm gonna grab this brush and I want to do it on red actually it's in the red here I can go ahead and just sort of add just a little bit of detail in there So you want to keep this sort of inserted into this part here. Like so. We can fix this one real quick. There we go. <clears throat> 
Let's take a look a little bit closer. Let's see if we see anything that we don't like. Oh, we did miss something. So let's add this one to this top one. So I'm gonna get rid of, uh, let's see. Like so. And let's add that as a screen. I wanna have, make sure that everything on the bottom is dark. Oops. There you go. So on screen, let's duplicate that twice. And let's do some motion blur here. Actually, I'm going to change the direction of that just a slightly going up. Let's move that. And the one on top is probably like this. Let's put that on color dodge. And let's change the color of that like so. So the same thing to this one. Right. Actually, let's add some little details here. to the center all right so yeah this is pretty much the whole process that I use for um, for these sort of backgrounds um, as you can see it's pretty simple and straightforward sort of like just following a process of um, different things to make it look like this and so um, then you can go in and sort of add little details here and there just to kind of polish it and making sure that um, you have enough um, information in there to solve the idea. So you can add, let's say, I'm add some crevices and little panels and indications of um, different panels and stuff inside the inside the element just to create some um, medium and small details so you can break up some of these big um, panels here with uh, that sort of detail And for the end, what we're gonna do is actually just do the the uh, blur effect, all right? So again, we save this and um, let's duplicate everything here. Just copy and paste everything here. whenever this decides to finish. All right, so let's copy everything, duplicate that, and let's do lens blur.
And let's add a mask to that. And just have that effect this side here. All right. Actually, I can grab the mask and I can increase the the gradient by scaling it. So it's a little bit, um, the, the gradient is way bigger, so the transition is uh, smoother here. All right. So we can duplicate that again. Or actually, let's uh, grab the bottom one. Let's duplicate that. And let's actually sharpen this one just to make it a little bit sharper. There we go. All right. So there you have it. This is pretty much the whole process um, that I used here. I really hope that gives you an insight on the way I was thinking while making these backgrounds and all the pretty much all the techniques that I use. I mean, this is this is it. This, that's all I did really um, for this set of backgrounds. Um, but yeah, I hope you like it. I hope uh, that was um, um, you learned something from it. And if you have any questions about Anything for this process, let me know in the comment section below. All right. Um, hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you guys on the next one.